I speak to you today at the same hour as my father did exactly 75 years ago. This week, the Queen remembers VE Day. I vividly remember the jubilant scenes my sister and I witnessed with our parents and Winston Churchill from the balcony of Buckingham Palace. And shares a moving message needed now more than ever. Never give up, never despair. That was the message of VE Day. Welcome to the Royal Report, everyone. I'm your host, Sharon Carpenter. It's been another busy week for the royal family, so let's get right to the news. Last week, Kate announced a new collaborative project with the National Portrait Gallery called Hold Still. The Duchess is asking UK residents to submit photographs that capture the resilience, bravery and kindness being displayed during the COVID-19 crisis. On Thursday, Kate appeared on the ITV show this morning to discuss the upcoming exhibit. What made you want to get involved? Well, I think we've all seen um, some incredible images out there and um, heard some amazing stories, um, some desperately sad stories, but also some really uplifting ones as well. Um, and I really hope that through a project um, like this, we might be able to showcase some of those stories. The Duchess was also asked about her own experience photographing her children. And that's the power of photography. It can capture a moment and tell a story. Well, I mean, you've done that beautifully just a, a week or so ago with Louis and the uh, Instagram versus reality, which oh, uh, I think a is great a char photo. charmed absolutely everybody. I should have taken a photograph of what I look like after that as well. <laughs> Luckily, that wasn't documented, but I look like Louis at the end of this. No doubt, Kate has a great eye and an adorable model. On Friday, the Queen marked the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II in Europe with a special televised address. The war had been a total war. It had affected everyone and no one was immune from its impact. Whether it be the men and women called up to serve, families separated from each other, or people asked to take up new roles and skills to support the war effort, all had a part to play. Her Majesty paid loving tribute to her father during the BBC broadcast, which began at 9 p.m. The exact time King George VI gave his historic radio address back in 1945. At the start, the outlook seemed bleak, the end distant, the outcome uncertain. But we kept faith that the cause was right. And this belief, as my father noted in his broadcast, carried us through. Never give up, never despair. That was the message of VE Day. The Queen concluded her four-minute speech by touching on the current set of challenges facing the nation. And when I look at our country today and see what we are willing to do to protect and support one another, I say with pride that we are still a nation those brave soldiers, sailors and airmen would recognise and admire. I send my warmest good wishes to you all. Last week, in anticipation of this historic anniversary, PBS premiered a new documentary titled The Queen at War. The hour-long film examines the effect World War II has had on the Queen's life and reign. I think that the war made Princess Elizabeth grow up like it made me grow up. It really made her. Queen at War features interviews with authors, historians, and some individuals like wartime evacuee Ron Batchelor, who spoke about the special bond between the British people and their beloved monarch. It made her closer to the people who she reigned as subjects, and it was made us closer to her because they had been in the war and right through the war, they were one of us. The royal family were one of us. The Queen at War will be streaming on PBS until June 2nd and is definitely worth a watch. And one more story from last Friday. William and Kate spent part of the day video chatting with a few World War II veterans who were living at the Mays House Care Home in East Sussex. And do you both remember VD? Do you remember it? Is it something that, that stuck with you all these years? Well, I was very small at the time, but I can remember the street party, the whole of the street, turned into one big table and we all um, 
you know, had a party. I can remember that. Yes, we were in Greece at the time, and uh, I had to go around early in the morning with rum for all the men. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you were the uh, you were the hero of the time there, Charles, delivering rum out to everybody. Yes, lovely. On Saturday, Prince Harry took to the Invictus Games Twitter account to share a message about the postponed competition for wounded servicemen and women. On what was scheduled to be the opening day of the 2020 Games, the Duke discussed the array of digital events that will be taking place this week instead. Alongside all the virtual activity from the team in The Hague, I'm delighted that the Invictus Games Foundation will be hosting a virtual conference with international speakers and participants sharing their thoughts and experience of resilience and why the Invictus spirit is so important. I'm incredibly grateful uh, for your continued support. Stay safe and this week, stay tuned as we bring The Hague home to you. And that wasn't the only time we saw the Duke supporting one of his charities. On Sunday, Harry sent a video message to the members of Onside Youth Zones, an organization that provides safe spaces for young adults across the UK. During the 90 second message, which served as an introduction to a streaming broadcast of the charity's 2019 award show, the Prince celebrated the resilience of the group's members while also giving a nod to his wife's now famous surviving thriving line. Hats off to every single one of you for, for surviving, but also for thriving. Like you, the, these, these stories and these, these challenges, these daily challenges that you guys are coming up, uh, up against are unbelievable and so many people will never understand but you guys have the strength to, to to pull through so good to see harry's finding ways to carry on with causes so near and dear to his heart love that all right joining us now the co-host of the royally obsessed podcast rachel bowie is here rachel thank you so much for being here how are you doing thank you for having me awesome to have you first off for those who don't know what is royally obsessed and what sort of things do you talk about so we cover all the royal news of the week. Um, we are, New episodes go live every Thursday on Apple Podcasts, and we are covering the Queen, Princess Charlotte, uh, Kate Middleton, Prince William, everything, all the goings on um, from the UK to LA. We have lots of content to share. Very cool. Now, how did you become a fan of the royals, and, and when did you realize you were royally obsessed? Well, so I feel like my mom actually takes all the credit for this. She was pregnant with me at the same time that Princess Diana was pregnant with Prince William. And so she watched religiously as she had went through her pregnancy. And I feel like um, ever since I kind of, you know, I came of age with William, I really actually religiously read People magazine. And I had two letters published about my royal obsession in the mailbag column. If you can think back to that, I know it still exists, but I feel like it's been through my whole life that I've just always loved the royals so much. And speaking of royally obsessed, our viewers are very much in that camp as well. So we thought we'd do them a service by providing a few recommendations for some royal themed quarantainments. We're each going to recommend a book, a movie and a TV show. The only rule is the TV show cannot be the crown because I'm sure by now we've all seen every episode at least two times. Sound good? Ready to go. Can't wait. Let's do it. All right. First up, what's your film? So my film actually right now is um, Elephant, available to stream for free on Disney+. Plus. Um, but, but it's the Disney nature documentary that Meghan Markle lent her voice to about a herd of elephants and their trek across the Kalahari Desert. I absolutely love it. I feel like she does a terrific job. It's super playful and fun. But for me, it's also very toddler friendly. I have a two-year-old and he's very into it as well. So it sort of, you know, checks all the boxes. We can all watch it together. <laughs> the perfect family film. This one might not be for toddlers. Might my film, I'm going with the classic The Queen with Helen Mirren's Oscar winning performance. It's been nearly 15 years since it was released back in 2006. So definitely time for a rewatch. You can catch it now on YouTube, Amazon Prime and Hulu. Yeah, I think right. I saw that in the theaters when it came out. I loved that movie so much. Such an incredible movie. All right, what's your book? So my book is actually, it's a coffee table book. It's called Modern Monarchy by Chris Jackson. He is the Getty photographer that has had the privilege of really having um, intimate photography sessions with the royals for over 15 years. Um, he gets such direct access. He really is kind of a dedicated royal photographer. If you don't follow him on Instagram, Chris Jackson Getty, I think is his handle. And um, he's just amazing. But the coffee table book is kind of the best escapism for me right now, you know, pouring over all the images. Um, he has photos of trooping the color, of 
Princess Charlotte's christening. But one of my favorite photos I feel like I have to mention is Kate Middleton in the rain um, exiting Kensington Palace. And I feel like that's such a mood. That feels like a coronavirus mood for me right now. I'm kind of like, I, I, I just like that photo a lot, but it's been very calming to flip through. Some real intimate moments there that he was able to capture. And you can get it on Amazon. So you can still, it's, it's an easy, easy, uh, and he's, he's yeah. easy buy. Yeah. Got it. Great, great choice. Now for my book, I'm picking the biography, Megan, A Hollywood Princess, written by Andrew Morton. It talks about Megan's childhood in LA and life as an actress before she met Harry. A great read, that's for sure. All right, what's your TV show, Rachel? Okay, so my TV show is actually super fun. It is uh, Meghan Markle themed, it is Suits. So I came to learn during coronavirus, during this time at home, that, um, the first eight seasons of Suits are actually available to stream for free on Amazon Prime, and I've never watched. So I have started, and I've also brought my husband along on the journey, and he's also addicted. So I feel like I'm enjoying it. And it's like, you know, baby Meghan Markle, she's so sweet and sassy and cool, and I love her character, Rachel, on the show. Yeah, I do too. Now, for my TV show, I'm going with the docuseries The Royal House of Windsor, which is on Netflix. It goes through the history of the Windsor family and features some awesome archival footage, a definite binge watch for me there. All right, some great ideas there for sure. Rachel, before we go, tell us what you've got coming up on Royally Obsessed. So coming up on Royally Obsessed, I mean, we're really keeping up with everything that they're doing on social media right now. We, you know, are digging in also to um, all the tabloid stuff that's going on, the lawsuit that Prince Harry has, um, and Meghan, a lot going on. So um, we're really excited. And the episodes drop every Thursday on Apple Podcasts. Okay, I'll be listening. Rachel, thank you so much for being here. Hope to see you back on the show really soon. Thank you for having me. The Royal Report will be right back. Welcome back. It is now time for our social media minutes with our social media correspondent, Gillian Fleischman. Gillian, how are you today? Hi, Sharon. I'm doing great. Nice to see you again. Great to see you too. So what do you have for us? What a week for Royal Post. Last Monday, ahead of the Queen's VE Day speech last Friday, the Royal Family's Instagram story shared these flashback images from the day 75 years ago, as well as recordings of the Queen talking about the historic occasion. Here's a quick clip of her describing the celebrations. I remember lines of unknown people linking arms and walking down Whitehall. All of us just swept along on a tide of happiness and relief. Don't worry, that clip didn't count against my time, but it would have been worth it if it did. I love hearing vintage Queen Elizabeth. Last Wednesday, in honor of Archie's birthday, his family posted a bunch of photos to mark the special day. The Queen shared this throwback to the Royal Family Instagram of her first time meeting him, and both the Clarence House and Kensington Royal pages reposted images from his christening. Happy belated birthday, Archie. Last Thursday, the Kensington Royal page shared six images from across the UK that helped inspire Kate's Hold Still 2020 project. The post also included a personal note from the Duchess, which said the photo collection aims to capture the spirit of the nation right now. 100 photos will be included in a digital exhibition in August. Such moving photos. Also on Thursday, we noticed the change to the Kensington Royal social media channels. The family updated their profile picture on Instagram and Twitter to a still from the recent video of the family clapping for key workers on the BBC's The Big Night In fundraising telethon. The previous image was their 2018 Christmas card photo. Love the timely change up. And finally, this past Sunday, Prince Charles marked the end of the British Cheese Weekender on the Clarence House Insta story by releasing a message of support for British cheesemongers and encouraging people to shop these small businesses. He also shared a recipe for cheesy baked eggs, which is one of his favorite cheese dishes. Can't wait to make this. And that's your social media minute. Great stuff, Gillian. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sharon. All right, we have to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're sharing some tips to get royal ready virtually. Welcome back to the show. Joining us now is royal etiquette expert and friend of the show, Micah Myers here. Micah, so good to see you again. How are you doing? Hello, thank you for having me. I'm great. Always great to see you. Now, a lot has changed since we saw you last. Quarantine is now our new normal. Uh, whether we're working from home or staying in touch with friends and family, we're all spending a lot of time on video calls. And while the royals have certainly mastered this technology, some of us 
sadly have not, which is why we'd love you to share your top five tips for getting royally ready for a video call. Exactly. I've come today with five tips that you and everybody else at home can use starting today to look very royal on their next video call. Awesome. Okay. So what's your first tip for us? So my first tip is to wear a statement color, something that really pops off camera. Looking back at the recent calls that we have seen our favorite royals doing, it's all about having that statement color. Not You don't want to do like a super crazy pattern. Um, and I want you to kind of think about something that is a really bright color that really pops on the screen. It's almost like the queen, how she chooses her outfit so people can see her. It's the same thing on video call. So think about Kate on Easter, that beautiful gold outfit she had on. It just really popped and everybody was talking about it. Then you might remember um, when she was working in Kensington Palace, she had that gorgeous kind of mauve suit on, full, just beautiful. Beautiful, but again, solid color, popped straight off the screen and really looked great. And then again, think about Megan on her SmartWorks call. We saw that really kind of rich, deep maroon color that really stood out. So it's really thinking about minimal pattern and um, a big, bold, bright color to really stand out. Great advice. So I get a big X for that one. <laughs> In this way. Okay. <laughs> not, not so good for me uh, just yet. All right. What's your next tip? Okay. Tip number two is keep your hair and makeup neutral. If you kind of go too over the top, too glam, um, it kind of looks like you're not at home, right? You're not working from home, which they are. And they want to come across genuine. They are working from home just like us. Think about Kate. We saw her hair half up, half down. Think about on that Easter call. Just really kind of nobody was there to do her hair and makeup. It was really natural. She's famous for doing her own makeup anyway. Um, Kate on the BBC call with William, it was the same thing. We saw her with her hair down and just really relaxed and beautiful and there were no you know curling irons involved she was just really trying to be there and in her genuine self working from home and she looked fabulous yeah you're so right the royals never overdo it they get it just right and it's perfect and it's approachable right it's like a yeah. beautiful, beautiful fashion and and style relatable approachable okay now that we've talked to parents let's discuss must for making your camera shot royal worthy what's a good tip for this one Tip number three, the best lighting always comes from the front. It's all about the lighting. So, you know, some people are using light rings. Some people are doing all sorts of things. You might have a lamp at home. The key is that the light comes from the front. So we've seen, you know, Prince William just nail this. He looks amazing. He often is either in front of a window or he's just got a really nice bright light right in front of him. Wherever possible, try natural light. That is what is always proven to be the best. But if you don't, just make sure that the light isn't coming from behind you and instead straight on so we see that nice, beautiful smile and not an odd shadow that comes across your face. Good point, Micah. Got to have that right light. Any other tips for camera shots? Yes. So number four is always to have the camera at eye height. And to appear that you are talking to the person direct, looking into the camera and not down to the side or at the screen or at your phone or whatever it might be. So looking straight into the camera and having it an eyesight level. So think about Prince Charles. He did this beautifully. We saw him on one call and he's always dressed to the nines, right? He looks amazing. But he actually took his book called Harmony and kind of piled it up on some, you know, a block of printer paper just so he was eyeline with the camera. So it really felt that intimate connection that you were talking eye to eye with him and he's just really mastered that and it's something you can easily do at home too. I know I saw that photo I was thinking he's just like the rest of us with that setup. You know, and, and what's your final tip Micah? Number five, have fun with your backdrop. So you want to make sure that, you know, everything is clean, presentable. You don't have any cereal bowls in the background um, for people to, to see. Now, my favorite new background is actually one that Messenger from Facebook put out. Um, and it's a whole room and it's actually a palace. I actually took a little shot to show you. It is just phenomenal. It's like 
bright reds, golds, look up at the chandelier. You can kind of see all the detail and you can see all the tiny little mosaic painting. Um, and it's literally, you look up, you look down, you can look to the sides, you see these gold gilded mirrors. You actually look like you're in a palace. That's so amazing. That's my new option um, for backgrounds. I love that. That is so cool. Okay, check out my current favorite. Okay. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> I like this place. Barking and really? Palace, of course. I wish my I home really looked like this. Perfect. Micah, thank you so much. That was awesome. Awesome tips, as always, and spot on. Thank you so much for having me. I wish I was at Buckingham Palace right now, too. I'll tell you that much. Me too, me too. And by the way, if anyone out there is looking for a good quarantine read, Mike has a new book out, Business Etiquette Made Easy, that we know you will absolutely love. Micah, thanks again for being here. Hope to see you again soon. Thank you for having me. The Royal Report will be right back. Welcome back everyone. As we mentioned earlier, last Friday was the 75th anniversary of BE Day. So today we're taking a look back with this week's great moments in royal history. Today, we give thanks to God for a great deliverance. On May 8, 1945, Germany officially surrendered to the Allied forces. Hours later, King George VI addressed his war-weary subjects from a bomb-scarred Buckingham Palace. I ask you to join with me in that act of thanksgiving. Germany, the enemy who drove all Europe into war, has been finally overcome. Greater and greater crowds surge around the palace railings as onto the balcony come the royal family, accompanied by our Prime Minister himself. World War II would last another four months until the Japanese surrendered in September, but May 8th would forever be known as Victory in Europe Day. Darkening skies over London are lit by the joyous lights of peace. At this great moment in their history, the people of Britain rejoice with their allies in the victory for which every one of them has worked so hard and so long. All right, now before we go, let's check in with Max, shall we? Max, aka the Count of Cuteness. How are you doing? <coughs> Great to hear it, Max. Now, some of you may know, Max was an aspiring actor before joining the Royal Report, and in his day, he was known for landing small roles in big films, only most of the time, he didn't quite make the final cuts. Regardless, Max wanted to share some of his past work for this brand new segment. Take a look. You worked on The Queen. I love that film. In fact, I just recommended it earlier in the show. You have to tell me, what was it like working with Oscar winner Helen Mirren? <coughs> All right, Royal Watchers, that's our show for today. Remember to follow people on Twitter to watch the latest episodes of The Royal Report, streaming every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sharon Carpenter, and Max, why don't you say goodbye for the both of us? 